Hi, my name is Ruben. So today I'm going to talk about uh, why should we use Rx Java. And also, just to mention that this is an Ignite format, so um, the each slide will be 15 seconds long, and it, it will have a web best. And just to quickly tell you, the reason I put Rutala there is, I, I feel like that should have been the name for the next Android. Um, <laughs> so, Rx Java is an Android library, which is like Dapper, Picasso, Butter Knight, or Makito. Um, it's a library that, that's not just only... Huh? Oh. Okay, that's not just for uh, the just network or UI. It, you can just use uh, code pretty much everywhere. Just uh, just to kind of um, educate people who never used it, you just have to remember two things, which is the you just uh, you need to create observable and you need to create a subscriber to R use R Java, and um, to and remember that the code inside observable is only executed when you subscribe to it, and those are the two main things that you have to remember. And, uh, you know, Arxava being another library, and we know we already know so much library, and it, it's such a you know pain in our head, like you know to and uh, to just to program Android when you just want to just write write a code for it. But like uh, with my experience with Arxava, like ever since uh, I started using it, I've been a, a like happy coder. You know, um, I've been programming better. I've been writing better thread. I've been um, you know having less memory leak, um, more uh, more readable code, and. I had like all these you know, good experiences with it, and today I just have four stories to tell you. Um, the first one being is thread. Thread is very hard. Um, you have to write a lot of code to get it right, and um, uh, and also there are like uh, the state that you have to control, and it's not easy. So um, for many years uh, in my Android experience, I have used a sync task for my you know background uh, thread uh, task. So in this example, I have TTC, TTC class which builds LRT. After LRT is built, I'm gonna write the LRT. But knowing that you know, if you live in Toronto, you know, building LRT will take ages. You know, it's a very bad idea to you know, put it on the main thread. So we we'll, we'll want to put this in the background thread. So uh, let's see. so so I create a class. So I create a class. Um, you know, uh, which is a sync task, and with generate, I try to pass out uh, main, many void as I can. And you will soon see the slide, uh, so I kind of talk a little faster. Um, okay, so there we go. And you see that, you know, it's, it's a lot of code. Um, you know, you see, you know, ttc.buildlrt in doing background, and then, you know, obviously when the task is finished, we want to be notified. So we have to create our unique listener and the setter as well. And at the same time, we have to maintain the listener and then notify it. And you know, like this has been my you know, um, experience for many years. And then you know, going back to the code, um, you know, there's a build. Uh, so I'm gonna have a build LRT method which has a listener of on LRT finished listener. And you know, that kind of as you can see, you know, uh, when it's finished, I just write LRT and that's it. So. Um, and I thought, like you know, there's uh, this is this was Andrew's uh, Google's recommendation. I thought there's no way to kind of you know uh, kind of write this better until you know I started using our Uh As you can see, you know, I, I don't have to create uh, a same task. I don't have to create uh, my own unit listener. And this is the same task that I was was doing with the listener. And uh, all I have to do is uh, write a couple of lines. And as you can see, uh, so for build LRT, um, so it's been refactored to the return observable. And then and, and when I do subscribe, it will notify me, and I can write the LRT when it's finished. And also, there are two uh, very powerful methods here, which is subscribe and observable. And the reason why this is powerful is that you can land on any thread that you want to land on. And to manually code this, it, it takes a lot of code, and it, it's not easy. So uh, to give you one of my experience, um, there was a uh, on one of the projects I worked on. It was a new project. I had to find a bug for it. And you know, as a normal developer, you know, you look at the stack trace and you look at where the line crashed. And then inside, it, and on that line, it, the, the code was inside a listener. And it would, and that listener was was in another listener. And that listener was inside another listener. So you have like all these uh, crazy, ugly nested listener. The reason was because uh, it was. The reason was because you know it was a synchronous call, so there was no way to do it without listening. And then I was like, you know, like where am I? So I started, you know, searching for usage and you know implementation of this listener, and it gave me way too much. So um, I started to you know get serious, and then you know started to put up, start debug mode, and then start to put those breakpoints. 
And then, you know, uh, but the thing is, was, remember, this is a synchronous task, so I have to put one breakpoint at a time, which is, and, and so I have to find the first call, then the next call, and the next call. So, which is kind of like, you know, opening a mystery box. Uh, when you open a mystery box, there's another mystery box, and when you open another, there's another. So, this is not a nice experience, you know. Um, Ever since I kind of went through this, it's, it, I had such a, a traumatic experience. So, <laughs> like, and ever since then, I've been thinking, well, how can we, you know, improve this? Like, I don't want to get so many listeners, and it, it just, it, it's too ugly. Um, so, uh, we started to talk about, you know, uh, I didn't, well, I didn't have chance for it, but if I could go back, I'd probably written Archive, uh, use Archive and written like this. Um, so, in the code here, you see build LRT and build subway. So, and the build transit is basically, um, so you're waiting to build like all these uh, LRT and uh, subway to finish. And then after that, you subscribe to it, you try to uh, notify, and then you can write LRT when all the transit are finished. And um, to note that build LRT and build subway, these are in uh, asynchronous tasks. Like if you're to do this um, with a listener, you have less a listener, or you have a class that you know um, the uh, maintain two listeners, and which is not easy code to write. So, and so with our it's better this way. Okay. Right. Uh, so okay. So. Um, while we're still kind of like going inside, there's like 10 more seconds. So the next topic um, I, I'm going to talk about is uh, canceling a, a like thread. You know, um, whenever you uh, to to write out a code that cancels thread, it's not easy. Um, there's a state management, and you have to write if statement. And you know, maybe the first time you get it perfect, but second time you may not, or maybe the other developer may not get it correctly. You know. And this feels kind of like, you know, you picked up a phone and you just want to hang out. You know, it should be that simple experience. But with, you know, all these, uh, like, if statement, it feels like, you know, you're trying to find a barcode and then you're trying to plug the barcode out to hang up your phone. So, you know, it, sh it should be just as simple as hanging out. With, um, just like in the picture. So, with our job, uh, the, um, when you subscribe, but subscribe to Observable, all you have to do is, uh, just call unsubscribe and it will cancel your task. And also since you're kind of you know um, writing your code in like functional ways, so it, you're kind of you know already kind of in the mindset of building uh, you know a synchronous task you know that can be canceled at the midpoint. So which are like uh, you know there are a lot of benefits. So next topic I'll talk about is uh, Lambda. So Lambda is a feature that was introduced in Java 8. Um, this feature. Uh, so a lot of people kind of use it as to kind of um, to write shorter way to um, uh, write anonymous class, but and they only think that this is just syntax sugar. You know um, that's what many people assume. And as you can see, you know it's it's just one line of code instead of being you know multiple lines writing you know new operator with method and um, we saw this uh, early code. So I'll give you a simple quiz actually. Um, so I have four methods right now. So. On the left uh, is the traditional way of kind of you know um, implementing your listener and creating an anonymous class, and the other right is use lambda. And it, and just to uh, notice, uh, only on the bottom um, there's this uh, it calls write LRT, um, and and then this is called from the, the enclosed class. So which one do you think will not hold uh, the reference of the enclosed class? So uh, while drinking some water, you can think you know inside your head to which one is your answer. So. Yeah, so um, I, I know you guys are smart guardians, so I'm pretty sure everyone got that. So um, <laughs> the, the reason is, you know, when you have Lambda, it, it, makes, a, it makes your compiler smarter. You know, um, it, it, you only um, have a reference to the enclosing class if you are required, which is the case like the bottom uh, right. So, but for anonymous class, it always holds our instance to the enclosing class. And this is such a, you know, great advantage of using Lambda because, you know, um, the reason why this is good is that you know this causes memory leak. You know memory leak are bad. Like when you have too many memory leak, you app will crash randomly. You don't know, you know, um, 
when it's uh, like your whole house will pretty much get wet. Um, so for the Sarish uh, uh, Ax Java, it's very friendly to um, uh, Lambda. So every function, every subscriber, uh, the completion on error, you can uh, convert it to Lambda, and you can kind of like uh, pre-optimize yourself, like. Um, by writing that one. Um, and there are some more tricks to it, but um, and also the next topic, so this is the third third story I want to tell. So which is about stream API. Again, this is what's introduced in uh, Java edit. So um, for many years um, I've been you know uh, writing uh, it, like um, it's uh, for it as as it's shown here. You know uh, it's it's kinda like you know log code in a way. Like you know you define your size, you define I you define how, how fast you want to increment, and you have the you know, get. And most of the time, this is all you need. But uh, with uh, Stream API, you, know, you can write it online. And basically, well, uh, what I'm trying to say, you can get rid of your code, and you, can never, you don't have to write it ever again. And with, uh, so this is, what, this is what Stream API does. Um, with RxJava, you can do the same thing. There's a two Ulu here because uh, the reason is remember the thread logic I was talking about. So it can do those uh, the uh, iterable tasks, and, and at the same time you can apply your thread logic. So this is pretty powerful. And but it, but this is not just to say that you can actually replace the entire stream API with RxJava. You know, stream API still has like a lot more powerful function that's dedicated to like collection. So um, so there are like those and that. So. The, the last topic will be about, uh, sorry about uh, the design pattern. So um, to, to be uh, very honest, Fire Java, you know, it's a code you have to use it everywhere. It's something that you know you have to be like married about it. It's, it's not like one place that you can use it and kind of like hide away, kind of like brush off it or something. And you know, and since being a library, this um, this is very fragile. Like um, you know, we all have like dealt with uh, library being updated or. Uh, being replaced by a better library, and it, it's not a you know, nice experience. So uh, to give you one, one of the experience that I have, so um, and one of the uh, I developed, um, I implemented Google Analytics uh, one. So that was like a few years back. So and I I um, code this heck out of like every places, and I was sending events. And a couple of years later, um, Google Analytics two came out. So I had to move back to that, and you know. Um, so Google Analytics 2 came out, so it may take some time to refactor. And it, it's a painful process. And, and then guess what? You know, a couple of months ago, Firebase Analytics came out, so you have to refactor your code again. So it, you know, having library is not nice all the time. But you know, I, but I want to ensure that the, you have, after using ArcSava, I, I can I can see that this library is uh, very timeless. Um, it's. Uh, it's just think, imagine that you're building um, MVC, MD, uh, MVP, or MDBM, you know, which we share again, kind of like uh, timeless design pattern. And R Java is just to help build your observer pattern. So I don't, so um, I, I don't think that this will have a huge change in the future. And I think you can, it's, it's a library that will stay for a very long time and be supported. And I see a lot of like um, the plugins that you know I have the, the libraries I use supports R Java. So yeah, and that's it.